Lupanan. Chancellor Mrs. Irene Walter, CD, President Professor Roderick Hewitt. Vice President Dr. Grantley Sinclair and Dr. Aldena Belenfante, Moderator of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, Right Reverend Gary Harriot, Guest Speaker Reverend Dr. Joseph Coombe, Registrar Mrs. Myra Codlin, Deans Dr. Elvis Buckle and Mr. Errol Hamilton, other officers of the university, specially invited guests. Class of Valedictorian of 2021, Mrs. Kemoy Pinock Dempster, graduates, family and friends of graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the sanctuary and in the virtual space. COVID-19 continues to place challenges in our path to success, yet still we are rebuilding relevance, responsiveness, and resilience. Welcome to the International University of the Caribbean 2021 virtual and live presentation of graduates where you have come to celebrate our achievements with us. For the second year running, we find ourselves in an unusual ceremony, not being able to participate in the usual face-to-face -face pomp and pageantry the celebrations of the biggest milestone in our lives to date. We have no choice but to embrace this approach in addition to observing the protocols that of wearing of masks, physical distancing, sanitizing, and getting vaccinated. We are pleased to be here participating in this ceremony and we are happy that you have joined us at the end of this journey to celebrate with us and we ask that you continue to support us as we make the transition into the world of work. We welcome you to graduation 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, please receive the students, student guild members, alumni, representatives, staff, and faculty of the university.
Please stand for the national anthem. Standing. I now invite our moderator, the Right Reverend Gary Harriot, to offer prayers. Let us pray. Indeed, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Loving God, we thank you for all your blessings to us, the various ways in which your gifts come to us. We thank you for the vision that was inspired, that led to the founding of this university. We thank you for all those who have served, all those who have paved the way, and those who continue to provide leadership and service at this time. We thank you for accompanying those we, are, we have come together this afternoon to celebrate with. You have accompanied them successfully on this journey of study. And we thank you for reaching this point of completion. And so we ask your Lord to be present with us in this time of thanksgiving and celebration. We commit to you this gathering, this function. Pray that your spirit will be present in our midst to inspire us. May you speak to us as you choose and help us to respond to you as you desire. So we commit to you the affairs of this gathering. May all be done to your honor and glory provide inspiration for all those who are present physically and virtually. We ask this in your loving and precious name. Amen. Will the assembly please sit? I now invite the president, Professor Roderick Hewitt, 
to present his report. Professor Hill. Chancellor Walter, Right Reverend Gary Harriet, moderator of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, guest speaker, Professor Reverend Dr. Jusup Kum, faculty members of this great institution, graduating class of 21, family members, friends, colleagues who are here assembled at Hope United Church and are watching online. I greet you today, indeed, the entire IUC community we are gathered to celebrate and to give thanks to God for all of our graduates. This is our second experience of virtual graduation within this COVID-19 stressful environment. We had hoped that by now, the national vaccination drive would have resulted in Jamaica achieving a herd community with about 70% uptake in vaccination, which would allow us to more or less to function normally. But this has not been realized. At the last graduation in March 21, when we had the 2020 graduation, we were close to 500 deaths lest we forget we are currently over 2,000 deaths and is increasing daily. Vaccine hesitancy has indeed, along with um, other kinds of attitude to the vaccination drive, has seriously slowed down and is currently weakening the capacity of educational institutions along with the wider economy from achieving its, their best potential. Sadly, ignorance, destructive selfishness, well, I may also add conscientious stupidity, may have also added to the situation in which people, individuals are claiming their constitutional rights that must be respected. But the end result of this, and with the threat of new variants, we on a small island called Jamaica, we need to pray for all within the wider Jamaican society and here in our IUC community that we'll do the right thing and act in not only in our own best interest, but in the interest of family and the wider good of all, the common good of all. Chancellor, for this graduation, we have followed the regulations for the number of persons allowed to gather physically here at Hope. However, we have a wider audience and I want to recognize those who are gathered virtually. I, in this new dispensation, I offer full respect to family members gathered around their computer, their TV, watching their daughter, their son, uh, whatever is the link with the family member, celebrating with them. Along with that, our council members, those who are scattered 
not only here in Jamaica, but in Cayman Islands and other places who are celebrating with those of us who are present here at Hope. We give God thanks for your presence. Let us therefore enthusiastically declare our heartfelt congratulations to all who are graduating today, who have successfully completed their course of study prescribed by the university academic program and also would have fulfilled the payment of their fees as is required by our university policy. Today, it's all about you, your resilience, your perseverance. You have burnt what is called the proverbial midnight oil. And you have sacrificed much to achieve your goal. And through it all, through your dedication and your hard work, you have made this day possible. You know, history is full of persons who almost made it. You read history, there are more people who almost made it than those who have struggled to ensure that they made it to the end. Congratulations, you have made it. And we give God thanks for you. We are proud of you. History will remember you among those who have made it. You are surrounded by your friends, your peers, your family members who are supporting you and who have supported you through your years of study. And they are rejoicing and celebrating with your great accomplishment. You are graduating from this university as a competent professional, ready to serve the public with commitment, with compassion, with competence. I commend and I inspire you to embody the motto of this institution. Seek peace, pursue excellence in all of your endeavor. Your graduation comes at a time when the world leaders recently gathered at Glasgow in Scotland for the COP26 uh, Climate Summit. I cannot allow you to leave this institution as a strategic leader in this island nation of Jamaica without taking into account the serious times in which we're living. As I penned this address, I thought, for those of you who don't think I keep abreast, um, do you remember that song with Egyptian called Serious Times? Times are indeed serious. In the nation of close to three million, we are addicted to living life in the fast lane, in the mad rush to get where we want to go without considering an, the impending climate change change catastrophe on the horizon. In fact, it is already here. We are a small island that is interconnected with the wider world that is warming up at an uncontrollable pace because of human beings and our behavior. The United States President Joe Biden, thank God for that name, at the recent climate conference stated that there is no more time to hang back or to sit on the bench or to argue among ourselves. This is a challenge for our collective lifetimes. The existential threat, I want to underline. The existential threat. The threat to human existence as we know it and every day delay the cost of inaction increases so let this be the moment that history that we answer history's call i want to underline the phrase let this be the moment to you graduates i plead with you 
let this be your moment. The magnitude of the challenge facing the planet is greater than the threats we are experiencing from COVID-19. The climate change existential threat will injure and, and will require every person to change the course of his or her lifestyle to live right and in harmony with the environment. You are looking forward to a bright future. However, unless there is, an, there is urgent action from all of us with all hands on deck, no one, no one will have a brighter future because the world as we know it and our ledger will be adversely affected. So let this phase of your life count. David Luce, I want to quote him, he says, God regularly chose people whom the world in deemed to be insignificant and through whom God is willing to do marvelous things. God chooses people in the world who can easily, can easily be ignored to participate in God's world-changing, God's saving act activity. So he is pointing to no person being insignificant to make a difference in this world. You are important. God has every confidence in you and that you will make this part of your life count by making the radical changes that are needed. Although the last two years of your university life has been affected by the health regulation that prevented in-person gathering to a great extent, you have persevered to the end, using all kinds of media to keep going with your studies. I encourage you to cherish and protect the links that you have made with your university peers, the friendship that will journey with you throughout the year. Be, be, we encourage you to be part of the IUC Alumni Association. Uh, they will pay good dividends throughout your life. Today marks the, end, the ending of one phase of your academic journey, especially now I'm referring to you, to the those who are graduating at their first degree level. Don't stop there for God's sake. Don't stop there. This is only a comma. A comma for you to move on to your next level, however difficult it may be. Please consider graduate studies to be your next phase of the journey. Do not stop improving your academic competencies. This is a fast changing world and this world will not wait on those who do not fashion their lives into continuous upgrade. So I encourage you, don't let anyone keep you back. IUC is proud to have been part of your life in the pedagogical formation that you have experienced so that you may become an important change agent serving in strategic position, not only in Jamaica, but throughout the world. We have graduates working in the wider Caribbean and throughout the world. Make your country, Jamaica, a better place. Over the next two years, at least I need to just quickly highlight to you that the past two years since I've been called into this office, I have worked assiduously to halt the decline in public perception and in public trust of this institution that has affected our planned development. I'm pleased that we have made small but important positive steps in rebuilding that trust, in bringing our debts under control, in working towards having our whatever is our growth pattern um, focus on what we now deem to be our new strategic plan, our business plan with the theme, new beginnings, rebuilding relevance, responsiveness, and resilience. 
There is a Chinese proverb that states, be not afraid of growing slowly. Be afraid, however, of standing still. The IUC strategic business plan, which was recently approved by the council, has established the mandate for the next five years. We have adopted a fundamental change to the university's business strategy. And we believe it is, it is imperative to address, to address the entrenched attitudes and challenges um, that we are facing as an institution. The past challenges are being grasped as opportunities for fresh start, new beginnings, and a chance for us to change that which we long to be. It is intended to restore and continue to build, rebuild public confidence. At the core, IUC's mission is to be a student-centered university that opens doors of opportunity to persons committed to academic excellence, to peace building, and to community development. That is our missional calling, to influence the formation of competent, compassionate, and committed leaders who are spiritually formed, culturally sensitive, and open to new and lifelong learning. At the center of IUC's academic program is our continuous focus on ensuring that all of our undergraduate and our postgraduate programs are fully accredited in a timely manner. Indeed, in our strategic plan, we are aiming for full institutional accreditation within the next five years. We are involved in the recruitment of students all over Jamaica, and we are strengthening our faculty with the recruitment of senior PhD lecturers from overseas to strengthen our graduate studies and our research output. In addition, we are on track to teaching out our current cohort of doctoral students as we move towards developing wider partnerships with overseas university and their PhD programs. During the past year, we have worked towards introducing peace studies as the pedagogical discourse that will inform the university's teaching and learning. Through interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary research and community-based training, students will focus on following different themes that we believe will strengthen their peace-building formation. Family and child resiliency, gender-based violence, religion and violence. When we were thinking of this, we were not even thinking of the Ark in Montego Bay. Cultural policy, political and economic violence that are harming our nation. Peace building as a form of putting up resistance against the deformation of humanity in our society. We are therefore pleading with you to join us. The institution will demonstrate its commitment to the marginalized. We will engage in in-depth research and to bring to leaders who can reshape policies and to make this nation a better place where nonviolence will inform our human behavior. During the first year of operation, focus has been given to establishing and fine-tuning our administration, strengthening our faculty, developing our curriculum, writing new modules, developing training handbooks, holding workshops for community leaders, networking with Violence Prevention Alliance, identifying and outfitting office space for this new Peace Institute, 
holding partnership discussion with overseas institutions and other universities. And indeed, sisters and brothers, for the next five years, we want you to hold us accountable as we seek to harness the power of technology, hardware and software, to strengthen and transform IUC's communication into a fully integrative, blended institution, online and face-to-face -face with our teaching and learning. We will maintain quality and affordable tuition because our bias is to respond to students who are also on the margins. Therefore, we are duty-bound to make sure we are cost-effective in whatever we're doing. We will offer meaningful and transformative educational experience, increasing, as I said, the number of our lecturers, and we will go beyond the shores of Jamaica to ensure that you, your training is also receiving wider international gathering. I know time is going, so let me try and turn the corner in wrapping up, and you will also be able to see my presentation online when we upload it to the IUC page. Undergirding our new focus, we, are, um, we have embraced our values, the values of respect that will inform all of our behavior. I want to again unpack this acronym when we use the term respect. The R is relevance of context. If we find that we are doing something that is not relevant to context, we are going to leave that behind and move on. We are going to embrace ethical behavior, the R, the E, ethical behavior in all that we do, holding our staff and students alike. We are solution-oriented, that's the S, solution-oriented learning and research. The P is naturally peace building for social cohesion. The E again embraces our motto, excellence in all of our endeavors. The C says it all, community, and the T speaks for itself in all that we do, trust building. So respect informs all that we do. It is our hope, therefore, and expectation that through this plan, IUC will be poised for limitless opportunities, growth, and future successes. I end with expressions of thanks to the graduating class of 2021. Again, those of you who are here with us in person and those who are online participating in this graduation. I want to thank the, the chancellor and her council members. I want to thank the IUC faculty, the administrative staff, the graduation planning committee. I want to thank the, our United Church Synod and their support for what we have been doing. Thanks for your commitment and perseverance in making today's ceremony possible. And so, of special appreciation are uh, for our Chancellor, Mrs. Irene Walter, and Mr. Donald Reynolds, who will be honored later in this ceremony for their indomitable service to the work of IUC and the wider educational sector within Jamaica and the Caribbean. To you both, my sister and brother, I give thanks to God for your labor of love. I pray for your continuing support in tangible ways to strengthening the work and the mission of this university. Chancellor Walter, I thank you. Let me thank our president for that comprehensive report and for his charge to the students. 
I invite the assembly to stand for the playing of the university song.
going in this world to face the unknown morrow and all its ups and downs and when temptation comes our way we'll have to be strong we'll just have to face this together all along in our time we've learned to love for sure we've learned to care and share and that is what we're thankful for in our time all this come and go and now it's For sure, it's our time, time to go After all that we've been through, now it's time to go In our time, we've learned to love for sure And that is what we're thankful for In our time All this come and go And now it's our time Yes, for sure It's our time Time to go After all that we've been through, now it's time to go. And we, we, must, <coughs> we must thank the singer for that beautiful rendition. Mr. President, Professor Dr. Roderick Hewitt, moderator of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, the Right Reverend Gary Harriot, or General Secretary Reverend Norbert Stevens, Honor Honorary Graduate Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Donald Reynolds, Governors of the General Council, Distinguished Guest Speaker Reverend Joseph Coe, Vice Presidents, Registrar, Deans, and other University Officers, Specially Invited Guests, President of the student body, members of the graduating class, alumni, students, family members, friends, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me express my pleasure at having you all with us today at another graduation ceremony. Both those present in person, as well as those joining us in the virtual space which technology facilitates. I joined with the representatives of the student body and extended a very warm welcome to you. The venue is different from times past when the assembly gathered together and their graduating class was part of that assembly. But the vagaries of COVID-19 have made it impossible for us to meet in that fashion. I hope, however, that the symbolism of the occasion, which remains, will compensate for the changed venue. It is my added pleasure to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished and esteemed guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Joseph Kuhn, Secretary of the Council for World Mission. I also offer my sincere congratulations to you, my fellow honorary, honorary graduate, Mr. Donald Reynolds, a long-serving and dedicated governor of the General Council. I, will I rejoice with you in your preferment, which is an indication of the value which the university has placed on the contributions you have made to its growth and development over the years. I pray that God will continue to give you the strength to continue the significant work to which you have been assigned. Graduation is an annual rite of passage that is meaningful in the life of all academic institutions. 
But I dare say for you, the 250 graduates today, November the 25th, 2021, will be that incredibly special event which each of you will remember as a signal that your academic achievement has been recognized in a ceremony that stretches back into antiquity and will be greeted with a sense of relief that a difficult passage has been completed. I also remind you that graduation does not mean the end of the learning process, as our president pointed out. I wish to quote a statement from UNESCO which underscores the point. Adult education must not be regarded as a luxury for a few exceptional persons here and there, but is a permanent national necessity, an inseparable aspect of citizenship, and therefore should be both universal and lifelong. We support the view that continuous learning is vital if we are to make informed choices about our lives and the society. I also want to share with you the experience of one of your number who will be awarded a doctorate in philosophy today. She speaks of the value of acquiring new knowledge and expanding her perception as part of her studies. But what impresses me most is her statement of the lessons gained from her advanced study program. Namely, I cannot change the events that I have no control over, but I can change the way I respond. It is easy to regard this graduation ceremony as just another celebratory end to a program of study. But lest its significance be lost in you, I remind you that your graduation from this university today is related to events which took place almost two decades ago. And it is related to the vision of a number of persons, notably the founding president, Reverend Dr. Maitland Evans, whose dream culminated almost 16 years to the day in the launch of this university. On that occasion, the 24th day of November 2005, your current president, Professor Roderick Hewitt, the then moderator of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, spoke the following words to an assembly which included the then General Secretary, Reverend Colin Cowan, the Chancellor, the late Sir Howard Cook, the Pro-Chancellor, that's me, and the founding president, Reverend Dr. Maitland Evans, as well as senior members of the administration. This is what he said at that time. The United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands affirms and underscores its commitment to education in general and through this university, higher education in particular. Now on this historic 24th day of November 2005, I, as moderator of the Synod of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, resolve to establish the International University of the Caribbean, and on the basis of this authority, to set forth an educational movement which embodies kingdom values and enshrines an educational vision that is deep enough and wide enough to engage our people in a process of renewal, empowerment, and transformation. That event in 2005 was the embodiment of the vision of one of the university founders, the Reverend Dr. Maitland Evans, and of which you, the graduating class of 2000, and 21 are the beneficiaries. The vision realized then was years in the making before coming to fruition. I share this not only because of his relevance to the celebrations being held today, but to underscore the point that visioning, one of the most important aspects of an organization's functioning, is not only for businesses, but it is an important aspect of an imp individual's life. Having a vision provides a clear sense of purpose and direction in planning the future. 
a purpose that is driven by passion. I urge you to follow the example set by those pioneers and to invest time and energy in identifying your life's vision. Give yourself the freedom to dream, to use your imagination, to see and feel what does not yet exist. I suggest that you be creative in identifying what is important to you and to persevere in bringing it into being. John Graham, an American financial economist, asserts, a vision is not the same as goals or objectives. Those come from the head. A vision comes from the heart. As an illustration of the value of visioning in your years, in defining the purpose of, of one's life, I now share with you a heartwarming story known to us here at Hope United. One of my mentees, a young woman who spent 10 years of her early life in a children's home, with the support of a group of church women some years ago, enrolled in a course of study at this university and earned a bachelor's degree in nursing. On, graduate, and on graduating, she told me of the vision she had for the future. At that time, she had yet to receive a paycheck. But as we reminisced on the journey she traveled, she confided, I'm going to start a foundation with the aim of helping children in the children's home to realize their dreams. And so she has done. Just yesterday, she sent us the logo to show that she has achieved that aim. She has now realized that dream which she has envisaged, which she then envisaged. Society has often lauded individuals for being resilient in the face of difficulties where they demonstrate the ability not only to survive but also to thrive. But institutions can also demonstrate resilience and certainly our university has done so in the face of COVID-19 and economic challenges of the last triennium. I applaud you, the president, and your team for facing down those problems, adapting in the face of challenges, and keeping alive the vision of a university committed to serving and empowering the underserved members of our society. This ceremony would be less meaningful if I did not acknowledge those foundation members of the administration today, present today, who have journeyed with the university since its inception. Dr. Elvis Hewitt Butler and Dr. Jane Dodman, who both participated in the launching ceremony in 2005. They're still with us today. I also commend the committed faculty members and administrative staff who have served as significant contributors to this great enterprise. I also have a word of commendation for the parents, the spouses, and families of our new graduates. As a parent myself, I know the thrill, satisfaction, and indeed relief experienced in a moment such as this, which marks the end of the journey, filled with love and sacrifice. You can be justly proud of their achievements and of the role you played in supporting them through, during that journey. At each of the several graduation ceremonies in which I have participated since my appointment as pro-chancellor in 2005, I have reveled in the excitement generated by the vibrancy of the graduating class. For me, this graduation ceremony is a significant one because this is the last time that I will be addressing you as your chancellor. I offer my warmest congratulations to you, the new graduates, and wish you well in all your future endeavors. I feel confident in affirming you as being among the brightest and best in our society. I know that for many of you, the journey has not been an easy one, as you have had to deal with stress, strain, and struggle 
to overcome the multiple challenges faced in combining the responsibilities of work, home, and the classroom in order to reach your goal of receiving a university degree. The university looks to you to, to help to reshape our beloved Jamaica, and I wish for you a productive life and one that enhances our society. I urge you, as the president has done, to keep faith with the university's motto, seek peace, pursue excellence, as you continue your journey of life. I thank you. I, I call on the university registrar to announce the next item. Good afternoon, everyone. Chancellor, allow me to extend congratulations to the graduating class of 2021 as they celebrate their achievements. I also wish to congratulate all those who journeyed with them and gave them unreserved support throughout their years of studies. Chancellor, I'm pleased to announce that the records of the International University of the Caribbean and its constituent colleges, the Mel Nathan College, and the College for Leadership and Theological Development have shown that these candidates have successfully completed their course of studies in the various disciplines offered at the institution. Among, among these are bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and doctoral degrees. We are confident that all candidates were adequately prepared and are ready to be presented for graduation. I now call on Mr. President, I now ask Ms. Janelle Daly to present Mrs. Aaron L. Walter, CD, and Mr. Donald S. Reynolds, CD, whom the General Counsel of the University is pleased to recommend for the award of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. I see all protocols observed. The centuries-old parable of the poor man who wore his long robe for a long time, unaware that in the hem of his robe was hidden an extremely valuable gemstone, is well known. Having made the discovery of the gem, he then possessed the wealth to provide for his future well-being. Mr. President, graduates, and honored guests, today, many centuries later, on the occasion of this, the 15th graduation ceremony of the International University of the Caribbean, the General Council of the University takes pride and exaltation in revealing a treasure that has been hidden within the walls of this institution since 2005. This treasure, is in the form of a precious and valuable gem that shines so brightly that it radiates, that its radiance extends beyond these walls to the rest of the island of Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. The minerals which comprise the jewel, due to heat and pressure, over time become crystalline, emitting a glow that is pleasing to anyone in close range. In the case of this particular gem, the effect of pressure and heat started from as early as 1953 at Camperdown High School, where she taught the subject History of the Caribbean after studying at Shortwood Teachers College. She later studied at the University of the West Indies and beyond our shores at Columbia University in the United States of America. Heat and pressure produced and solidifying basis for expansion into significant contribution to other human development activities, 
in CARICOM, within her home church, the United Church of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, in children's homes and other social clubs such as the Business and Professional Women's Club and the Caribbean Community of Retired Persons. Mr. President, I seek on behalf of the General Council, which has given me permission to reveal today the identity of that brightly shining jewel in the person of Mrs. Irene Loretta Walter, CD, our very own Chancellor. Mrs. Walter has made significant contributions to education in the Caribbean, culminating with her most notable accomplishments, the launch of the Caribbean-wide Secondary School Leaving Examinations, CSEC, in 1979. Later in 1998, she presided over the launch of the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination, CAPE, as the replacement of the overseas-based Cambridge A-level examinations. Many are the awards that Mrs. Walter has received during her 40 year service to humanity and her former institutions. Among them, Hall of Fame of her alma mater, Camperdown High School, the Corridor of Excellence of Shortwood Teachers College, recognition as a distinguished graduate of the University of the West Indies on its 50th anniversary and honored by the government of Jamaica with the award of the Order of Distinction Commander Class. Indeed, she was duly recognized as a living legend by the Caribbean community of retired persons. The International University of the Caribbean will be wafted comfortably forward on the wave of the knowledge and expertise gained from Mrs. Walter's sojourn in the institution not unlike the poor man in the parable after he had discovered the valuable jewel hidden in the hem of his gown. We're grateful for her many contributions and sincere commitment to the university, and so for her remarkable work, which is grounded in education. Mr. President, I present to you Mrs. Irene L. Walter CD, and invite you by the authority invested in you by the General Council of the International University of the Caribbean to confer on her the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. By the authority vested in me by the General Council of the International University of the Caribbean, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Dr. Irene Walter. probably should start to say, words fail me. Mr. President, moderator, honorary graduate, Donald Reynolds, governor of the general council, distinguished guest speaker, vice president, Specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am greatly honored to be considered worthy of receiving the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters of this university. Especially as the award comes with the approval of the President and the General Council who have been my esteemed colleagues who have shared in the governance of this institution. The university has done many an enormous honor and I humbly accept the award. I consider myself especially privileged to be one of the first two persons to receive this honor and more so because my fellow honoree, 
Mr. Donald Reynolds, is to my mind so deserving of the recognition based on the sterling service he has given to the university over the years. It is particularly moving for me to receive the award at the end of my 16 years of association with the university. And I'm profoundly grateful to Dr. Maitland Evans, the founding president, who invited me to serve as the first pro-chancellor under the chancellorship of the great statesman and church leader, the late Sir Howard Cook. The opportunity to serve in the exciting and rewarding area of mission aimed at empowering a segment of the population by providing opportunities for earning a graduate degree was especially gratifying. I also thank the pioneering members of the council as well as the faculty members and staff who brought, bought, who bought into the bought into and shared the vision articulated by the Synod of the United Church. The years of association with the nascent university allowed me to share whatever expertise I had acquired in my earlier roles of an assistant registrar of the University of the West Indies, Mona, and later as deputy registrar and then registrar and chief executive officer of the then newly established regional examining body, CXC. The experience gained during those early years of this university's life was momentous. And I recall with pleasure as the university expanded its facilities, grew its student numbers, created campuses strategically located within the island, and increased the number of programs which were accredited and in the staff complement. If the award of an honorary degree is in recognition of my contribution to this university in particular and the society in general, there's no doubt that I need to give credit to a number of persons who have helped to shape the person I've become. Many must remain nameless. But I gratefully acknowledge the support of my first teacher, my uncle who earned his degree from London University in the post-war years as an external student. From him, I learned to love learning. The headmistress of Camperdown High School, my alma mater, the late Mrs. Ivy May Grant, was a pioneer in education, but she was not only a benefactor to me, but she urged me to strive for excellence in anything I did. My relative, the late O.T. Fairclough, credited with the founding of the People's National Party and in whose name a vision award has been established, taught me the value of service. The late Reverend Ashley Smith, in a particular tumultuous time of my life, helped to shape my Christian belief and behavior. In my adult years, my own children and their families, and I want to acknowledge the presence of my son-in-law and my granddaughters. <laughs> they have kept me anchored, and I thank them for their daily expression of love and care. This award of an honorary degree of this university now allows me to claim membership of the university family <laughs> as an alumna. I will always cherish the opportunity to continue my association with this university, which has become such an integral part of my life, albeit in a different capacity. Again, I thank you most sincerely for the honor conferred on me. <clears throat> I now call on the, the president to present the honorary degree to 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On this 15th graduation ceremony of the International University of the Caribbean, the General Council of the University has determined that Mr. Donald Reynolds, CD, the Chair of the Finance Committee of the General Council of the International University of the Caribbean, be awarded Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. It is the great honor of our university and to the current and future graduates that Mr. Reynolds has accepted this award. In making this award, the university has noted that Mr. Reynolds distinguished himself in the field of accounting and made significant contributions to public and private sector development in Jamaica. Mr. Reynolds, who was born in Montego Bay, St. James, relocated to Kingston in his early years. Having completed primary and secondary schools, he progressed to the University of the West Indies, where he earned his Bachelor of Science degree in economics with a major in accounting. From there, he went to England to pursue further studies, leading to his certification as a chartered accountant. On returning to Jamaica, he joined Delot & Touche in 1971 as a supervisor and retired as a managing partner and chairman of the firm after serving for 35 years. To be a managing partner and director of audit in Delot and Touche means that a person must have vast experience and knowledge in the field of accounting, and Donald Reynolds has just that. He was audit senior at Thomas H. Howe and Co Company and Pete Marwick Mitchell and Company in London, England. The General Council of the University recognizes the impressive local and international credits to his name and the, stellar, and the stellar contribution that Mr. Reynolds has made in the field of accounting, distinguishing himself as a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of, of Jamaica, FCA, serving as the president from 1986 to 1988 and chair of the company's law reform and continuing professional education monitoring committee. Donald Reynolds is also a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in English and Wales, ICAEW. In addition to serving these professional bodies, Mr. Reynolds also served on the National Housing Trust Board and the Office of Utilities Regulation Audit and Conduct Committee. He also served the Office of Utilities Regulations, Finance and Budget Committee. The International University of the Caribbean is indebted to Mr. Reynolds for the stellar service he has given to the General Council and the University, serving as the chair of its Finance Committee. The North Street United Church is also indebted to Mr. Reynolds for his August service as an elder, supervisor of the Youth Fellowship and founding director and secretary of the Education Development Foundation. For his outstanding contribution to audit, finance, and to the society, Mr. Reynolds received several awards and citations. These include the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica Distinguished Member Award in 2010, the University of the West Indies 60th Anniversary Award for the Accountancy Profession, Boss of the Year for the Kingston Chapter of the Jamaica Association of Professional Secretaries and Administrators, and the International University of the Caribbean's Spirit of Hope Award. For his outstanding contribution to accounting and significant contribution to public and private sector development in Jamaica, Mr. Reynolds was awarded the Order of Distinction in the rank of, in the rank of Commander Class, sorry, CD, by the Jamaican government on October 19, 2020. Dr. Reynolds is credited with his spirit, Donald Reynolds is credited with his spirit of giving back and in his own words once said, I didn't work for an award, I work because I want to give back. He found time to give back to the society by serving the youths of Jamaica. The accomplished retired accountant has assisted in molding countless youths through his work with the Scouts Association of Jamaica and the Rotary Club of Kingston, which he served as president. 
He also served as chair of the Board of Governors of Ligony Preparatory School and North Street Congregational Primary School and president of the Ligony Preparatory School and the St. Andrew High School for Girls Parent Teachers Association. So for his outstanding contribution to humanity, Mr. President, I present to you Mr. Donald S. Reynolds, CD, and invite you, by the authority invested in you, by the General Council of the International University of the Caribbean, to confer on him the degree of Doctors of Letters Honoris causa. By the authority vested in me by the General Council of the International University of the Caribbean, I confer upon you, Mr. Reynolds, the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris causa. Congratulations, Dr. Reynolds. Chancellor and Honorary Graduate, Mrs. Irene Walder, CD, President, Professor Roderick Hewitt, Vice Presidents, Dr. Rant Grantley Sinclair and Dr. Adeline Belenfanti, Moderator of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, Right Reverend Gary Harriot, Guest Speaker, Reverend Dr. Joseph Kuhn, Registrar, Mrs. Mara Codling, Deans, Dr. Elvis Buckle, and Mr. Errol Hamilton, members of council and other officers of the university, specially invited guests, class valedictorian of 21, 2021, graduates, families, and friends of the graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the sanctuary and virtually a good afternoon. It is with a sense of humility and thankfulness that I receive today the award of Doctors of Letters Honoris Causa, conferred on me by the International University of the Caribbean. My journey with this organization spans more than 40 years as I began serving the Belnathan Institute for Social and Economic Research, which after many years was spawned into the International University of the Caribbean. Today, I recognize Reverend Dr. Maitland Evans, who persuaded me to be a part of this new and exciting venture in addressing the social ills in our society. These have been years of challenge, but they've also brought me much joy and personal satisfaction as I see the fulfillment of what was at the time it started considered but a pipe dream. I congratulate and thank those who allowed me to accompany them in this journey. I exhort the new and present administration to not be wary in well-doing. Embrace the triple R, underpinned by relevance, responsibility, and resilience. To the graduates, I remind you that the heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward through the night. Many of you who are gathering this day here in the sanctuary and online can say amen to that. Remember that you have a duty of care to give back to your society and this university in particular. Hold your head high 
as a graduate of the IUC, you are only at the start of what can be a great future for you and your family. You have been provided with the tools for successful engagement in society, both in Jamaica and overseas. Use it to your advantage. I can testify that it is not where you come from or start that determines your future achievements and success, but where you strive to reach what personal efforts you are willing to make to improve yourself. My life and achievements stand as a living testimony of this statement. I want to pause to thank all those who have journeyed with me, all those from my church, the North Street United Church, where I received my nurture, and where persons went out of their way to make sure, as a poor boy, I was never left out. That is where my roots come from, and that is where my support comes from. I want to thank my family, who has always stayed with me and encouraged me through very difficult periods as I go forward. Graduates, live by the motto of the IUC, seek peace and pursue excellence. I thank you. I will now call on Ms. Desiree Burke to introduce the guest speaker and invite him to address the gathering. Ms. Burke. Chancellor, Dr. Irene Walter, CD, Dr. Donald Reynolds, President, Professor Roderick Hewitt, Vice Presidents, Dr. Grantley Sinclair and Dr. Alden Belafonte, Moderator of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, Right Reverend Dr. Gary Harriot, Guest Speaker, Dr. Jossop Kum, Registrar, Mrs. Myra Codlin, Deans, Dr. Elvis Hewitt Buckle and Mr. Errol Hamilton. Other officers of the university, specially invited guests. Class valedictorian of 2021, Mrs. Kemoy Pinnock Dempster. Graduates, family and friends of the graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the sanctuary and in the virtual space, good afternoon. Today, the task of introducing our guest speaker is indeed a great privilege. Firstly, he's a man of virtue and simplicity who has had extraordinary achievements. Secondly, two distinct virtues come to mind, his perseverance and hard work. And thirdly, he has a pioneering spirit and willingness to serve. 
Dr. Joseph Kum is the General Secretary of the Council of World Missions based in Singapore. He is also a guest professor at Yonsei University in the Republic of Korea and Stellenbosch University in South Africa. He was a distinguished professor of world Christianity at the Presbyterian University and Theological Seminary Putz and served as director of the Korean Institute of Future Ecumenism sorry, from 2018 to 2021. Professor Kum served as director of the Commission of World Mission and Evangelism of the World Council of Churches based in Geneva, Switzerland from 2007 to 2018. During the period, he served as the editor of the International Review of Mission, which is the oldest international missiological journal incepted by the World Missionary Conference in Edinburgh in 1910. He is the main editor of the new WCC mission, Together Towards Life, Mission and Evangelism in Changing Landscapes, and a director of the World Mission Conference in 2018, Arusha, Tanzania. Prior to his tenure at WCC, Dr. Combs served CWM as the executive secretary of the mission program from 2003 to 2007. He obtained a BA, Master of Divinity, MDiv from Putz, Master of Theology, MTH Cum Laude, and PhD at the Center for the Study of World Christianity, University of Edinburgh. Dr. Cum was awarded Honorary Doctorate of Reform Theology at the Reform University of Debrecen in Hungary and Honorary Doctorate of Orthodox Theology at the University in Sibiu in Romania. Dr. Coombe's main focus of research is ecumenical, sorry, understanding and practice of mission of the context of world Christianity. He is an ordained minister of the Presbyterian Church of Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Joseph Coombe. Dear sisters and brothers, I wish to extend my profound gratitude to all of you. Indeed, it is my joy and privilege to congratulate you on your graduation and deliver this keynote for your commencement. The COVID-19 pandemic has created numerous challenges to both students and professors as you are forced to have classes online. I know the difficulties of having to spend hours and hours every day in classes and writing papers. However, as a student, today is the day that your hard work, patience, and perseverance are honored with the degree, opening new avenues for your future. As professors and lecturers, it is the day that you witness your student thrive and go out to change the world with the passion and fresh knowledge that you have imparted in them. You deserve to be appreciated for all your hard work. And I would like to congratulate all of you for your time and energy that you have invested all these days. Now, as you are taking new journey in your life and in the world, I bless you May the deep peace of Christ be with you always, wherever you go. The title of my keynote today is Peace Be With You. Mission as Peace and Reconciliation. I have chosen this title because International University of Caribbean and the Council for World Mission have a vision to launch a peace studies and pedagogy program as a new vision of our bilateral partnership in academic studies and leadership formation. 
Therefore, I would like to elaborate on mission as a peace and reconciliation as the future theme for rebuilding our society and the world with the hope and resilience. Do not be afraid. According to Gospel of John, the Jewish leaders tried to kill Jesus for the first time after Jesus had healed a person who had been waiting for 38 years beside the pool of Bethesda. They said, he has broken the Sabbath. However, the system of Bethesda, which allows the one who can learn fast first to take everything, healing, must be broken. The structure that prohibits the suffering people from taking hands and walking together into the stirring water of life must be changed. The Bethesda, named as the house of mercy, which has no mercy at all, must be demolished even on the day of Sabbath. The faith which teaches a fake truth in the healing water of drain water must be reformed. You know that there was dam outside the city of Jerusalem. When the door of dam was suddenly opened, the water rushed into the castle. Therefore, there was stirring water in the pool of Bethesda. When I visited South Africa together with your president, Reverend Dr. Roderick Hewitt, I saw a guy who was the leader of the Holy Water Church in Peter Maritzburg. He bought a bottled water with a one dollar and after blessing he sold the so-called healing water as the price of three dollars to the congregation. You know what Jesus said just before his encounter with the patient in Bethesda? When he saw the lambs and doves ten times more expensive for sacrifice in the temple, he said, I will demolish this temple. For Jesus, with the people who have been waiting for the good news for 38 years, he begins to build up the cross, a new temple, the community of hope. But this hope was threat for the privileges who kept their power and money with the doctrine of Sabbath. So they crucified Jesus. Following the crucifixion of Jesus, we are told that the doors of the house where the disciples had met were rocked for the fear of Jews. John chapter 20, 19. In today's world, disciples of Jesus can find many reasons to be afraid. Division, fundamentalism, violence, and discriminations are all increasing everywhere in the world. In our society, the darker side of human nature is overwhelming without any shame. The greed of power, money, violence, and the notions of bitterness are competing to search for victims. We could easily be tempted to rock our doors and concern ourselves with self-preservation. The gospel, however, has in a different direction. Jesus came and stood among them, said, Do not be afraid. Peace be with you. As Father has sent me, so I send you. 
hiding behind the locked doors was not their calling, was not their mission. Instead, they were sent on a mission modeled after the mission of Jesus. Finally, Jesus pleaded to disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The education and training that you have obtained here at the IUC are to respond to these callings with the qualities of scholarship and competencies and the quality of transforming discipleship. We work with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and rely on God and people rather than the following the myth of the system of Bethesda. Although we do not have a gold and silver, we have joy and commitment to the gospel and passion for justice and peace. I believe that bringing this dynamism to the heart of our studies and faith is the first step of rejuvenating our society and the world. The current world is broken. Therefore, it is imperative for Christian movement to boldly witness to peace in Triangard and to live it out for the peace of the whole humanity. The world is yearning for Christian leadership that reconciles the broken and troubled world. The role of Christian leadership is crucial in order, in order for the church to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. We should embark on a pilgrimage of going peace to the world after our worship. The mission and the liturgy after liturgy in orthodox expression means the bold and prophetic proclamation of peace be with you after our worship in the sanctuary to the broken world. Mission as peace. In Judeo-Christian tradition has a name for the unity of peace, justice, and restoration of harmony with creation. It is Shalom. In Greco-Roman world, the notion of Shalom was translated as Eirene in Greek or Pax in Latin. However, the later lost the original meaning of the former. While Shalom contains a radical and ontological transformation of humanity and creation toward peace of God, Pax means the order by power without conflict. This understanding of Pax dominated in Christendom for a long time in our history. In my region, East Asia, the Chinese word Ping'an is a popular word which means peace. Ping means equality and justice. An means compound of mi, which means rice, and ko, which means mouth. Literally, pingan means, peace means, eating rice equally. Here we can find the notion of justice has been emphasized in East Asian concept of peace. Therefore, pingan cannot be exchangeable with Pax. Rather, it is a similar conception with Shalom in the Old Testament. The Hebrew concept of Shalom designates not only the absence of conflict, but presence of righteousness and wholeness. As you know, it has been said time and again in the famous slogan, if you want peace, work for justice. Furthermore, the same roots 
properly translated as a liberation and salvation. In other words, this shalom is fulfilled in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And that is called by apostles as the good news. Peace on earth was promised by the angels in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. The inauguration of God's reign is at hand, was promised by the Saint John as it was of Jesus. In the light of this beginning, the seventh beatitude calls peacemakers as children of God. To put into perspective, the peacemaking mission of Christians as a community is undergirded theologically by the confession of Christ's Lordship, which refuses to let the rulers of the present world sacralize its oppressive and divisive structures. Therefore, our mission of justice is intrinsically linked to the mission of cultivating and preserving peace among the peoples and nations of the world. For this reason, Christians can promote peace to help peoples of the world to make conscious choice and help them to develop deliberate policies for peace, justice, and the building of reconciled and healing communities. In short, Shalom, peace is the dream of Bible. Peace is the dream of Bible. Mission is reconciliation. St. Paul said, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are the ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entrust you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. It is this new creation that we hold to be the goal of our missionary endeavor. We believe that reconciliation and healing are pivotal to the progress by which that goal is to be reached. Reconciliation as the restoration of right relationship with God is the source of reconciliation with oneself, with our people and with the whole creation. As a people of faith, we can neither close our eyes to reality, nor should we despair. We can still believe in the power and the promise of reconciliation as an alternative to violence and divisions. As the renowned Asian missiologist Professor Kozuki Goyama said, the unique and awesome truth about human history is that we can become creative or destructive, healing or damaging, because at its basis, there is mysterious freedom of human confidence and faith of the heart, which can make both God and idol. This is the risk the Creator God took. Jesus attempted to show a way to overcome the dichotomy of human history. Under his cross of hope, we can envision our aspirations for that another world. We can act to change our societies by overcome violence, building peace, and working for reconciliation. Archbishop Desmond Tutu said, True reconciliation is never cheap. 
for it is based on forgiveness, which is costly. Forgiveness, in turn, depends on repentance, which has to be based on our acknowledgement on what was done wrong, and therefore on disclosure of the truth. What Tutu said in the specific context during the reconciliation process immediately after apartheid in South Africa speak to us universally and is relevant globally. Although these words have a universal appeal, they have a local application at the same time. Therefore, the people of God are called not only to listen to this message, but also to preach it, live it out, and apply it in their context, in their missionary endeavors to construct peace and reconciliation. Reconciliation is the work of triune God, bringing fulfillment to God's eternal purposes of creation and salvation through Jesus Christ. For in him, all fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his, his cross. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. In the person of Jesus Christ, the divine nature and the human nature were reconciled and united forever. This is the starting point for our reconciliation with God. We have to actualize, by God's grace and our effort, what we already have in Christ through the Holy Spirit. The Bible is the full stories of reconciliation. The Old Testament addresses again and again the estrangement between God and God people, and God desire and urges for reconciliation and restoration of a relationship that was broken and fragmented through the human pride and various forms of rebellions against the God of life and justice. Similarly, in the New Testament, throughout his letters, St. Paul is greatly concerned that those whom Christ has reconciled in his body should not be divided, and that community of life should be the first expression of God's plan to the reconcile all things. He envisages the unity of not only Jew and Gentile, but also slave and free, male and female in Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verses 28. Paul uses the term reconciliation in exploring the nature of God, to illuminate the contents of the gospel as the good news, and to explain the ministry and mission of apostle and the church in the world. The term reconciliation thus becomes the almost all-embracing term to articulate what is at the heart of Christian faith and mission. Hwahe, reconciliation in Korean, means to solve conflict peacefully. But it is also says that there is no peace without reconciliation. Peace, in the concept of Hwahe, means to be reconciled and restored in relationship. In other words, peace that has been destroyed by the division should be re-established, or relationship should be renewed. Here, 
the focus falls on the prefix re, which means again. The biblical vision of reconciliation is to be reunified or to be one again with God, people, and creation. The underlying notion is that of beginning anew and unconditionally, even eschatologically. Hwahe as reconciliation has the sense of living together, maintaining peace in renewed and reconciled communities. Consequently, reconciliation is not merely a spiritual affair, but it is a theological, constitutional, moral, social, political, and economic issue which demands the transformation of entire human situation in all its aspects. A situation in which hungry are fed, the sick are healed, and the poor are given justice. In other words, reconciliation can also be described as a divine and human action that embraces the whole world, changing our relationship to God and people and making us new creatures. It is also mean understanding and implementing reconciliation as a program where God is reconciled with the people and as a social economic project where the God mission is intended for the fullness of life for all. This is a divine project of reconciliation in which the world church and all Christians are called to participate. There are two interrelated reasons for this. First, the healing of memories is necessary because the people's lives can be significantly hampered by the painful experience from the past, which is still live deep inside them. These experiences could be the loss of their beloved ones that leave people deeply self-doubting, feeling guilty, insecure, or afraid. Such experiences often continue to affect. They help people feel about themselves, how they respond to the lives of the opportunities, and also the how they relate to the other. Their relationship with God who loves them and wants them to be free and happy may also be disturbed by the, such an experience. Second, people, they struggle to forgive. When they are deeply hurt or suffer a serious loss through the malicious action of another person or persons, they can find it very hard to forget and reconcile with those that have caused their hurt or loss. While struggling with forgiveness, Christians are reminded to accept the main theme of Jesus' teaching, namely to forgive 70 times, seven times. Jesus is the discovery of forgiveness and lived a life of forgiveness, culminating in his ability to forgive even those who crucified him. In short, it is not hard to imagine God being gracious. The question is, how do we act in a gracious manner? The answer is that God's grace all follows into our lives. That grace might flow from God through us and onto our neighbor. And it is by that grace of God 
that we may show forgiveness to our neighbors. In conclusion, friends, we are called to be leaders and disciples who are ourselves are transforming and as such we are privileged to join in the mission of the Triune God, working together towards life, living out the values of the Kingdom of God in our daily life and engaging in mission from the margins. In a world where injustice and violence seem almost insuperable, where the hatred and racism seem to thrive, where the suffering is so widespread and terrifying, our Christian leadership is costly. Our mission is witnessing to deep peace in Christ in the world. Friends, people, they will know by the instant of their heart who we are and what theories we are talking about. People know by instant of their heart whether we really believe in the vision of new heaven and new earth. The Holy Spirit is creating renewed hope with people at the margins. Our mission is to reveal this God-created hope from the margins to the world. Therefore, our mission as a leadership is proclaiming the hope of peace and reconciliation. God has specially called us to the divided and wounded world. In the midst of agonies, despair, and crisis of life in this pandemic-stricken world, it is our mission to transform the world to seek alternative values, alternative ways of life, and alternative communities to, be, to reveal the peace of reconciliation in God's kingdom on earth by the power of Holy Spirit. Friends, I would like to congratulate once again your achievement. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, we now invite the deans in the appropriate colleges to present persons in their colleges to be, uh, who have been awarded first degrees and diplomas. First, we'll have Malnathan College, followed by the College of Leadership and Theological Development. Chance of the persons whose names will be called studied at the International University of the Caribbean and having fulfilled the requirements of the International University of the Caribbean will be presented to you and the Council of the uni University in having completed courses in Bachelors of Science, Bachelor of Arts and Associate Degrees. Chancellor, I now call on the Dean of the Melnathan College, Mr. Errol Hamilton. Chancellor, I present candidates from the Mel Nathan College who have qualified 
to receive bachelor's and associate degrees. From the Faculty of Engineering Technology and Technical Vocational Studies, Bachelor of Science in Engineering Technology, Javian Romel Bell. From the Faculty of Community Development and Social Entrepreneurship, with the Bachelor of Arts in Community Development, Tanya Daimian Brown Robinson. <laughs> Shadia Heami Wilson. <laughs> For the Occupational Associate Degree in Restaurant Operations, we have Yannick Shanake Daly. Barbara Amila Reed. Karina Anciana Thomas Goldburn. Shade. Nasheen Watkins. <laughs> Tashna Shanice Waldron. <laughs> From the Faculty of Business Management and Law, for a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, we have Antonio Washington Dunkley. <laughs> Zela Dorotha Francis Scott. <laughs> Shamoya Alicia Smith. <laughs> Wendy Ann Gale. <laughs> Gayan Katrina Taylor. And for the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with specialization in program and project management, we have Trace Ayton, Jordan Bell, Tamara Priscilla Bernard Pearson. Shamika Blythe. Shauna Susan Britton. Desiree Dijon Soraya Burke. Yannick Yanola K. Byfield Binney. <laughs> Sanatha Anika Bird. <laughs> Bridget Campbell. <laughs> Kasian Toya Day. Aluka or Shane Dows. Lorenzo Anthony Facey. Omoni Joshua Famakinwa. Tashana Francis Brown. Sashel Monique Goodwin. Sharonita Hunter Kellerman. Sheena Hutchinson Ricketts. 
Alice Melanie Jobson Robinson. Karine Anne Marie Johnson. Tanisha Stacian Johnson. Debian Shanique Jolly. Shelian Jones Segree. Christina Alexandria Kedo. Tushana Nicola Lodge. Trisha Donna Marie Lynch. Rajay Brian Marston. Vivia McFarlane. Omar Miller. Sophia Opeyemi Mohammed. Sandy Trisha Mullings. Nashanya Palmer. Nadira Shanice Parchment. Kimberly Parchment. Valdine Vanessa Ramsey. Candice Sashana Reed. Arlene Sophia Richards. Monice Richards. Petra Gay Rodney. Antonio Ricardo Scott. Shahabuddin Satrahan Scott. Latanya Abigail Smith. Moji Latoya Stewart. Doreen Anne Marie Taylor. Roshan David Thomas. O'Brien Adrian Walters. And Lesson Wright. For the Bachelor of Science in Hospitality and the Tourism Management, we have Kathian Edwards. On the authority vested in me and on the recommendation of the Melnathan College and the Academic Board of the University, I do hereby confer in absentia on the graduates the following approved degrees and associate degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. The Bachelor of Science degree in Engineering Technology, Bachelor of Arts in Community Development, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with a specialization in program and project management, and the associate degree in restaurant operations. Chancellor, the persons whose names 
will be called studied at the International University of the Caribbean and having fulfilled the requirements of the International University of the Caribbean will be presented to you and the Council of the University having completed courses in Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Education degrees. Chancellor, I now call on the Dean of the College of Leadership and Theological Development, Dr. Elvis Buckle. Chancellor, I present from the College for Leadership and Theological Development the students who have qualified to receive degrees in the following areas. Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, First Class Honors, Adonika Grant. <laughs> Nashima Hewitt. Renice Moses. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Kimoy Brown. <laughs> Sharika Dobson McFarlane. <laughs> Dacia Fairweather. Chantoy Francis, Helicia Regina Gardner, Noel Hamilton, Chake Holtham. Daniel Nunes, <laughs> Abigail Latania Pinto, <laughs> Shalane Reddy, <laughs> Kadian Carisha Sernash. Marie Thomas, Ashmonique Tomlinson, Ranisha Uta, Lassine Dover Wright. From the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, the Bachelor of Arts in General Studies, Patricia Anne Marie Paul, Nishana Henry, Sakina Smith Anderson. From the Faculty of Education, the Bachelor of Arts in Guidance and Counseling, First Class Honors. Tracy Ann Tamika Hosen Rowe. Michelle Moody Lewis. Bachelor of Arts, Straight Guidance and Counseling, we have Tanil Clayton. Sharon Baker. Colleen Bell. Amelia Brown. Candine Bryce. Tanil Clayton.
Sandra Campbell Masters. Jasset Cunningham Cameron. <clears throat> Suzette Dennis Austin. Cadian <clears throat> Dixon Williams. <clears throat> Annalisa Douglas. Juliet Janice Facey. Michael Farkison. Esther Ferguson. Carlene Findley Gordon. Kamisha Foster. Precious Francis Davy, Nicola Garnet Francis, Terian Goldson, Tani Lawrence, Sophia Morgan. Anita Morrison Dyer, <clears throat> Ladonna Mockler, <clears throat> Nakalia Mullings, <clears throat> Trifina Reed. Rayon Senior, Roger Shakespeare, Anicia Sinclair, Kimberly Swaby, Dennis Lorraine Thomas. Anna K. White. From the program Bachelor of Education Primary, first class honors, we have Kemoy Pinock Dempster. Ordinary Pass, Alison Allen, <laughs> Sherry Allen, Sherry Gay Allen, <laughs> Natasha Artwell, <laughs> Levine Burasing, <laughs> Jessica Brian Spencer. Conroy Butler, <laughs> Nicosi Campbell, Henry. Georgia Codner, Tony Ann Codner, Sandrine Coley. Garel Drummond, Nikisha Patricia Ferron, Sharita Ferrigan, Camille Findlayson, Carissa Graniel. Rohan Grant, 
Theresa Green McLean. Anne Marie Marisha Griffiths. Latanya Harris Magog. Mary Jean Hines. Alicia Jackson, Kareen James, Alcia Johnson, Anthony Kennedy. Indra Laird, Nadine Legister, Sheena Levine, Tamika McLean, Dennis Magog, Marceline McKenzie. Kellyon Kenesha Miller, Christina Morris Watt Miller Watson, so. Rafila Morgan, Claudine Morrison Blake, K. Maureen Morrison Turner. Davina Myers, Chanel Ormsby, Donia Phillips, Karine Price Pullock, Dean Marie Reed. Santina Robertson Campbell, Shanil Robinson, Anisha Satahu Graham, Lisa Let Shaw, Natasha Thomas. Sorry, Natasha Simmons. Wendy Spencer. Shereen Stevens. Chevron Stewart. Terry Ann Thompson Taylor. Cloisa Walker, Shanice Walters, Latoya Simone Watson, Shanna Lee Whiteley Wallace, Orphea White Stewart. Tanika White, Alicia Williams, Camille Willis Thompson, Camille Wong Harris, Marcia Rose Wright Thomas, Andrea Wright Williams. Thank you.
on the authority vested in me and on the recommendation of the faculty of the College for Leadership and Theological Development and the Academic Board of the University, I do hereby confer in absentia on the graduates the following approved degrees and all, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, Bachelor of Arts in General Studies, Bachelor of Arts in Guidance and Counseling, and Bachelor of Arts in Education Primary. Chancellor, at this time, we invite the moderator, Right Reverend Gary Harriot, to bring greetings. Chancellor, Dr. Irene Walter, Professor Reverend Dr. Roger Kewitt, President, other members of management, Reverend Norbert Stevens, General Secretary, United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, Professor Joseph Kum, General Secretary, Council for World Mission and guest speaker, other specially invited guests, faculty, graduating class, family and friends, Good afternoon. I bring you the greetings of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. And on behalf of the Synod, I wish to express our deep appreciation to you, Chancellor, and to Dr. Donald Reynolds for the invaluable contribution you have made to the development of IUC. We share this honor with you, and may God continue to bless you. Education has always been a mission priority of the United Church over the many years of our weakness in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. As a church, we recognize the important role education plays in the lives of individuals and the development of society. And so we have invested in education at the various levels, from basic school through to university. We're therefore the proud owner of this cutting edge university. Having set the pace and tracked the path of taking education to our people where they were and are, we are indeed a proud pioneer. Like other institutions, IUC has faced many challenges, worsened by the impact of COVID-19. But because this university is the manifestation of our faith in the risen Lord Jesus Christ, we are not daunted. We do not give up. We are determined to move forward. The theme for this ceremony is quite apt. IUC, new beginnings, rebuilding relevance, responsiveness, and resilience. As a church, we are pleased by the efforts to reposition the university in being relevant, responsive, and resilient within the context in which we are. We are particularly pleased with the new focus of online offering and our return to our core identity, a university focused on pursuing peace underpinned by excellence. It is of interest 
that this graduation is taking place on this International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Like most of our tertiary institutions, IUC is predominantly constituted by women, even as we would like to see more of our men being enrolled. We're also meeting at a time when a number of our communities are under state of public emergency on account of the levels of violence we are experiencing in our society. Therefore, the mission of peace building in our context is a beckoning call to IUC. On behalf of the Synod of the United Church, let me congratulate all those who have successfully completed their course of study. We can just imagine the sacrifice and challenge, but you have made it under God. May you experience personal fulfillment as a result. And may you also see yourself as a critical stakeholder to building a better society. We encourage you to continue pursuing long, lifelong learning and to help to promote IUC. I am personally a proud graduate of this university. May God bless you and inspire the leadership of IUC. May your impact be far-reaching in developing transformational leaders. The United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands remains committed to this, our university. Thank you. Chancellor, again, the persons whose names will be called studied at the International University of the Caribbean and perfor performed outstandingly in the areas mentioned and are therefore spe spe specially recognized. Chancellor, I now call on the Vice President, Corporate Services, Dr. Aldin Bellinfanti, to present the awards. For the highest academic achiever for the Chancellor's Award goes to Renice Latira Moses. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Moses is, is in a unavoidably absent today, so she'll get her award later. Christina Miller Watson. Highest practicum in education for the Sir Howard and Lady Cook Award. Nicola Garnett Francis, highest practicum in guidance and counseling for the Adeline White Award. <laughs> O'Brien Adrian Walters, Highest Research Undergraduate Studies for the Dean's Award. I'm sorry, Mr. Watson is, is not here as well, he's absent. Mark Smith, Highest Research Graduate Studies for the Vice President Academic Affairs.
next award is the President's Award for Transformational Leadership. And this was awarded to Shan Shamoya Smith. I'd like to say a little bit about this award. This award was, was um, put into place by our past president, the Reverend Dr. Maitland Evans, and it recognizes outstanding leadership in any era of the university that is displayed by the student. Now, Miss Smith, Ms. Shamoya Smith's Q and his family life began as far back as 2012 as a key clubber at Dunoon Park Technical High School, the objective being to give back to her community. Fast forward to 2017 where Shamoya, Shamoya received, fir, received a first step scholarship from the International University of the Caribbean, which financed 65% of her tuition for the four year, years of her study. The remaining 35% was paid from other scholarships and grants, which of course Ms. Smith went in search of herself. She would not be the young lady she sees today without the scholarship from IUC and the help she received from the Grace Kennedy and Staff Development Foundation. She became a member of the Circle K International Club in 2018 and was also a Student Guild President, rep sorry, representative for the Melanathan College in 2020. Ms. Smith was elected president of the Circle K International Club in March 2020. During her tenure, Shamoya and her team carried out several service projects and activities, including a donation to the Premi Foundation at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in November 2020 and feeding over 50 persons in Crossroads and New Kingston in December 2020. IUC Circle K Club also partnered with the Kiwanis Club of Downtown Kingston on a book drive blood collection drive, and also fed homeless persons on Christmas Day 2020. Note all these projects and activities were carried out during the COVID-19 pandemic. IUC Circle K Club was given the Circle K International Growth Enrichment Award for 2021 under Ms. Smith's guidance, having increased its membership numbers from 27 to 50. The club also received the Social Media Awareness Award, Silver Class, in 2021, the Single P Service Project Award, Gold Class, in 2021, and the Kiwanis Family Relation Award, Gold Class, for 2021, and most outstanding interclubber points for the first, second, third, and fourth quarters. This award is given to the Circle K Club, which supports and the projects and meetings of other university Circle K clubs. Ms. Smith was also honored with the Outstanding President Award at the end of her, end of her tenure in March 2021. Shamoya Smith continues to give back through her membership in the newly formed Kiwanis Club of 23 East Online, Jamaica, where she was elected Vice President. You see, she believes that the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Shamoya is a proud graduate of the IUC class of 2021 and is determined to attain her goal of becoming an accountant of a marketing manager. She lives by her philosophy, I aspire to inspire before I expire. Ladies and gentlemen, the awardee for Trans <laughs> Transformational Leadership 2021. I now call on the class valedictorian, Mrs. Kamoy Pinnock Dempster, first class honors, Faculty of Arts and Education, South Middlesex, to address the assembly. Mrs. Dempster.
Chancellor, Dr. Irene Walter, CD, Dr. Donald Reynolds, President, Professor Roderick Hewitt, Vice Presidents, Dr. Grantley Sinclair and Dr. Aldin Bellinfanti, Moderator of the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, Right Reverend Gary Harriot, Guest Speaker, Reverend Dr. Gusup Kum, Registrar, Mrs. Myra Codlin, Deans, Dr. Helvris Hewitt Buckle, and Mr. Harold Hamilton, other officers of the university, specially invited guests, graduates, family and friends of the graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the sanctuary and in the virtual space, good afternoon. Winston Churchill said, success doesn't happen overnight. It is a product of long-term diligence and perseverance. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. My fellow graduates, this is a proud moment for all of us. I stand here to represent you, class of 2021, from all the IUC campuses. We have come to the end of a journey that has prepared us for the rest of our lives. You can all attest that this journey that brought us here today was not smooth sailing. There were raging seas and mountains to climb at times. It was a tedious journey. For some of us, it took two years while others endure four long years. From orientation, we created new friendships, some of which will last a lifetime. We became family. A family looked out for each other. A family ensures that no one is left behind, and in this case, we all cross the finish line together. Right, class of 2021? We all had our fair share of challenges which threatens to derail us. Many of us thought of quitting. I began with a small batch of education students who enjoyed classes from 9 to 4 p.m. daily. We enjoyed the luxury of daylight, but this was short-lived because we were of small numbers. By the second semester, of our first year, we were told that we had to join the evening student who attend classes from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. We nearly had heart failure. We were in shock. We did not bargain for this. For me, this meant leaving classes nearly nine to travel home from Manchester to Clarendon with my three-year-old daughter. To make matters worse, I had no prior reason to drive at night. This was my dilemma, which called for responsiveness and resilience. Some of you might have had worse challenges, outstanding tuition balances, loss of loved ones, hospitalization, and so much more. These challenges and obstacles we had to face during our tenure makes us more resilient. We learn to thrive under pressure, as the Jamaican phrase says, turn your hand and make fashion. We had to use the little we had to do the impossible, to get what we wanted. We ought to applaud ourselves. As with only a year and a half to go, pushing through to the final line, we were suddenly hit with the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic brought about drastic changes for students, lecturers, and staff. This resulted in new uncharted educational terrain. We all had to learn and adapt quickly. Our classes changed from face-to-face -to, -face to online, first using Zoom, then Google Classroom. Most persons found the adjustment challenges, 
but eventually got the groove of it. We became experts in Google Classroom, but many students struggled with purchasing data plans as this was usually done twice per week. Those students in the country had even more challenges as country and Wi-Fi now were good. <laughs> the new norm was classes anytime, anywhere. Separate campuses were in the past as all campuses were merged online. The numbers in classes were huge, up to 100 at times, which extended our new found families. This came with our own sets of goals and advantages. As our graduation theme says, IUC, new beginning, resilient, responsive, relevant. Graduates, we were resilient and responsive to the challenges which faced us. Thanks to some amazing lecturers and staff from all the campuses that made this journey with us. From the Mandeville campus, I would like to highlight Dr. Oliphant, Dr. White, Mrs. Sharp, Mrs. Pinnock, and Dr. Johnson. My obeisance to you all. To our families, spouses, and friends that stood by us during our sleepless nights and struggles, a big thank you. Graduates, we made it. Yes, we made it regardless of our struggles. We were responsive, resilient in completing our degrees. The future awaits us, young professionals in various fields. Eleanor Roosevelt said, and I quote, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams, end of quote. Graduates of the International University of the Caribbean, class of 2021, we are relevant as we believed in our dreams. World, here we come. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I now call on Mrs. Pinot Demster to return <laughs> on behalf of the class of 2021 for being the, an outstanding achiever. We present this award to you. Chancellor, I now call on the Vice President, Dr. Grantley Sinclair, to present graduates for the award of master's degrees. Chancellor, I present to you graduates of our university who have fulfilled the requirements of the International University of the Caribbean, have been, haven't, I beg your pardon, haven't fulfilled the responsibilities of 
the responsibilities of the International University of the Caribbean have been admitted to the master's degree. By the authority vested in me, I confer on the persons whose names will be called master's degrees, having fulfilled the requirements of the university and will be admitted to the master's of science. I invite I invite the following persons to come forward. O'Neill Daly. <laughs> Pamela Mason Linton. <laughs> Claudia Samuels. Samuda. Here's a folder. Josephine Clark Young. You don't have to give her, you don't have to give it to Sister Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, in the, look, in the, look in the camera. Claudia Samuels. Samuda, rather. Oh, she's there. Nadia Samuel. Who's Nadia? Nadia Samuel. Thank you. Okay, this is Junior. Sharika. Crudos. She's not here. Is there anybody left out? Kay Dixon. I again call on Dr. Grantley Sinclair to present the Doctor of Advanced Psychology. <clears throat> Chancellor, I present to you Vanessa Eldermeyer Leverage of our university. Having fulfilled the requirements of the International University of the Caribbean, has been admitted to the Doctor of Advanced Psychology degree. I am especially delighted. You may come to the back. You may go to the back. I am especially delighted to have the honor 
based on the authority vested in me to confer on this person whose name will his name has been called that is Mrs. Vanessa Eldemar Leverage who has fulfilled the requirements of the university and will be admitted to the degree of a doctor of advanced psychology. I wish to offer my warmest congratulations. As one of the new members of the alumni, I want to offer to my fellow members of the alumni a very warm welcome to the association. Association, which means that we continue to be part of this great university. And not only that, I want to charge you to be at active members of this university in the years to come. It's very important. A university needs an alumni association to ensure that we, uh, ensure that we, we survive, we thrive. And I hope that you will be very active members of that association. Thank you very much. As 
far as I can. Oh, every morning I rise to stare at the sun. I know it is a blessing. Yeah. Lift up my eyes to the hills, oh bless them. With my two hands in the air as far as I can. As far as I can. My two hands in the air as far as I can. As far as I can. I'm blessed, oh man. As far as I can see, I'm blessed. As far as I see, you're blessed. You're blessed. I now call upon Mr. Sanja Witter, the president of the Students Guild, to repeat the pledge of leadership and service and he will be followed immediately after by the, the Right Reverend Gary Harriet, who will offer blessings on the graduates. We pledge We pledge to honor and uphold the ideals of the International University of the Caribbean. We will strive to function each day with qualities and self-worth and professionalism, giving meaning to life and creation through the pursuit of peace and excellence. Our lives will be characterized by values of honesty and integrity, commitment and service, peace and goodwill, justice and fair play, respect and positive regard, guidance and caregiving. We will carry within our hearts the motivation to work towards the transformation and renewal of our families, our communities, our nation, and ultimately our world. So I'm going to invite those who are part of the graduating class to stand with me as we pray. Those who are in the virtual space, I invite you to stand where you are as well as we pray. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this graduating class of 2021. We thank you, God, for rewarding their efforts. We pray your blessings upon them, upon their families and loved ones. Open to them doors of opportunity to exercise their learning for upward mobility and for service to others. In this context of COVID-19, protect them from infection at a time when the mental health of so many is challenged, protect their minds, their psyche, their emotions. Keep them safe from harm. Bless them with the right attitudes to life. And give them a passion to become positive change agents. We ask this in your loving name, O oh God. And may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, as, the, as this graduation ceremony for 
graduates in 2021 comes to a close and a new chapter in your lives begin. I again congratulate all of you for your perseverance and your commitment which have brought you to this point in your lives. May God bless you as you go forth to make a difference in your workplace, your community, and your society. I now declare the ceremony closed.